Warning. Censorship. Warning. Censorship. Warning. Censorship. Warning. Censorship. Either you're with me on it or you're not. And anybody who doesn't stand by me and doesn't realize that essential doesn't mean like an essential service. It means like I'm a provider to my children. Like that is my essential. I'm Tamara Ugolini for Rebel News here in Bowmanville, Ontario with Jess, who is the owner of the Boho Beauty Microblading and Spa facility here on Division Street. Um, now Jess came in to us as an I Will Open case. Uh, so she's been facing various restrictions and threats of lockdown. Um, Jess, you're here in Durham region, so I understand that that is considered a red zone currently. Yeah. Um, maybe you could just tell us a bit more about what that means for the functionality of your business. Yeah, so red zone places us into um, anything that removes masks we're un unable to do. So we do facials, we do waxing, we do lip blush, we do Botox injections. So the rules have allowed um, nurses who are regulated under government protocol, they can still remove masks and do that, but we aren't allowed to do that as a small business owner. So they, the nurses can do Botox, like lip injections, mm -hmm. but you can't perform a facial That's on right. a client. Yeah. And just because of the different regulations that they, so. they're trained? They're trained, or? but we're trained as well. Like under the health board standard, we do everything that's protocol for like bloodborne pathogen, which basically falls under like all coronavirus like protocol as well. So they even like in the first lockdown, they said, um, I think it was a month and a half before they allowed us to open. My Botox nurse was in here doing injections, but we weren't allowed. You're not allowed to do facials. No. Yeah. Okay. Or we can't do like, we do like cosmetic lip blush. Mm -hmm. Same thing as basically injecting needle into the lip. We're not allowed to do that. And how long that's been since March then, I guess? Um, no, so we were, March we've been shut down for six months. We opened again in August. Um, I think Botox nurses opened a month and a half prior to our opening in August. Mm -hmm. And now just like, what, three weeks ago, they put us into the red. So half okay. of our services we're not allowed to do. Okay. Can you tell me a little bit about what that means for you as a business owner? And Well, that's that like, that's huge revenue, right? Like my girls here, they have, um, like my estheticians, they make that money off of a facial. Like that is their biggest thing. That is our, like why a lot of people come to this spot because our facials are separated from everybody else. Like what we do is totally different. So now I have these girls who are contracted in, they don't make hourly, they have nothing, but they also don't qualify for SERP. So they have nothing. Mm -hmm. So, and how frustrating to have like the same thing, like the removal of the mask that a Botox nurse can come in and do but she can't like there's no there's no rhyme or reason there's nothing it's like logic, so frustrating cohesive cohesiveness so to... when that happened i said to the girls i was like listen i don't know how you feel but like is are we gonna do bootleg like facials in here because like we need to do what we have to do to survive mm -hmm. so one of my girls was like mm, i'm afraid and then the other one was like you've taught me so much i'm doing this so she still does it so that's part of the I will open mm -hmm. case here is that you've yeah. decided that these restrictions are nonsensical yeah, and they would frankly bankrupt you to even try to continue your business while doing basically just eyebrows. Yeah. Um, so you're continuing full steam ahead with your services and, and what you offer here. Yeah. And I said that from the beginning, like when first lockdown happened, Obviously, uh, it was a bit scary and not scary of the, the virus or anything like that. For me, I was just like afraid of being judged, right? Because everybody, when I would talk about reopening, they're like, are you crazy? Like I had a lot of like really negative feedback. And um, I told the girls straight up, like if this happens again, I will not close. Like I'm keeping my doors open. Well, tell me what you're facing with your clients. I mean, are people coming back in as they were normal? What's the what's the environment like? Uh, well, honestly, like people are scared, right? So you have so many people, like when I look at this week, for instance, I'm looking at the schedule, 
in March, we would have had like not even one spot to even come in to get like a wax done. Like that's how busy we were. So you were completely deplatformed from your social media accounts, specifically yeah. Facebook. Mm -hmm. How many, how many followers did you have there? What did that do for your, to your business? So like on my actual personal page, I had so many people coming every day because of the stuff I was posting was like pretty good content of like a lot of stuff that's going on in the world right now, especially with COVID and just things not adding up. So people every day would be adding me looking for that, like, peace of mind of like, hey, what is going on behind the scenes mm -hmm. here? Like, this doesn't make sense, right? So that platform there was almost 5,000 people. And then when I got cut off of Facebook, like they totally deactivated me like a hardware activate, like I can't ever go on my phone ever again, basically. Wow. Um, that shut down my Facebook business page, which had like 6,000 followers. There was like 500 five-star reviews, my whole portfolio. That generates probably about 60% of my business. And because of my personal opinions and beliefs in a lot of stuff that's going on right now, they didn't like that, so they, they shut me down. What does the future look like for you? I don't know how we're just gonna switch off and be normal again. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. But at this point, like if I'm going down, I'm going down fighting. So either you're with me on it or you're not. And anybody who doesn't stand by me and doesn't realize that essential doesn't mean like an essential service. It means like I'm a provider to my children. Like that is my essential. This is essential to you and your livelihood. And my livelihood. And I've your very family. Hard. Like this is insane. What, uh, what's your message to, do you have a message to, to women? To I had like tons of women being like, oh my gosh, you're so brave. I wish I could do that, but I'm so afraid of losing business and respect. So I have told all of them when I refuse to lock down, that they are welcome to come here and I will basically fight for them and protect them. So I think there are some women that are gonna come here and work. And I said, like, I would take that fine every day. Like, I would do that for you. If that means like boosting you up and giving you the confidence to stand up for yourself, like it's fight or flight. Like you need to just do what you need to do. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna take me down, I am going down with the fight. Mm -hmm. So I hope that this encourages other women, especially, I think all these women are just so afraid to, I don't know, to stand up because they're afraid of being judged and losing business and losing even more business. But mm -hmm. I mean, it, it seems like almost a lose, lose situation. It is a you lose, lose. You're going to lose regardless of what you do. So I'm, I refuse. Like I need my kids to know later that like, yeah, this happened, but I, I got arrested. I left <laughs> all of these things. Like I did whatever I could to keep it going. Right. Um, but yeah, I think people just need to unite and don't fight your neighbor. Like, this is mm -hmm. like, love thy neighbor, love thy neighbor. Yeah. yeah. And stand up for each other. Like they, people need to realize that like people like us who are fighting for the freedom and the anti-mask and all these things, like people are forgetting to just like be humans now. It's really, it's, well, it's very dehumanizing, not seeing people's like, facial gosh, my, my dad came in today because he was so excited about all of this because he follows you guys and he was just pumped, right? He walked in and he was being respectful of the client. So he comes in with a full mask and he had a tube on. And I actually went, how can I help you? <laughs> I didn't even know it was my dad. Wow. Isn't that awful? Yeah. Well, Jess, I appreciate you uh, taking the time to meet with me today and for Rebel to feature your story Yay! as an I will open yeah. story. Um, so uh, let, keep in touch. Let me know how things continue to go here with the mm -hmm. business. And as we face further threats of a lockdown, yeah. we will see what the future holds here at the uh, Boho <laughs> Microblading Spa in Bowmanville, Ontario. I'm Tamara Ugolini with Rebel News. If you're a small business like Jess, who feels like it's a lose-lose situation, whatever you decide to do, if you're facing increasing restrictions and threat of lockdown, we want to hear from you. Head on over to IWillOpen.com and share your story with us there. That's IWillOpen.com.